Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Simone Colombo, and today we'll present you our work on authenticated private information retrieval. Let's start with classic private information retrieval protocols. In this kind of protocols, we have a server that holds a database represented as a matrix, and a client, Alice, that holds an index of an entry in the database. The goal of the protocol is for Alice to learn the entry of the database corresponding to the index, and we want to ensure that the server learns nothing about Alice's query. You can also generalize private information retrieval to function evaluation. In this case, Alice would learn a function of a database, and again, we want to ensure that the server learns nothing about Alice's query. Uh, so, as an example, we can imagine a PGP key server. In this case, Alice would query for Bob's public key, for example. So, this query would be private, and the server would reply with the public key of Bob. The problem with classic PIR is, it doesn't, is that it doesn't consider integrity. So, let's assume that the server tampers with the entry that Alice wants to retrieve. This would means that Alice would retrieve the wrong entry, the I prime in this case. And following our example of the PGP key server, this means that an adversary, for example, could force Alice to retrieve a wrong public key, for example, to mount a man in the middle attack. So the first solution we might think about is to combine a classic PIR protocol with a classic authentication mechanism, such as signatures. So we would attach to each record the corresponding signature, and Alice would retrieve the record and the signature attached to it, and she will verify the signature. So if the signature verifies, Alice returns the uh, record she wants. Otherwise, she aborts. But again, the server might tamper with the database. And let's imagine that the server guesses the entry Alice is interested in. So in this case, Alice will reject this uh, record because the signature doesn't verify. And let's imagine that this bit of information goes back to the server. For example, because Alice issues a second query since she got garbage in the first one. Uh, and you can see that this bit of information here leaks information to the server about the record Alice was querying. So we need a new primitive that, uh, that has privacy and integrity at the same time. So we are not the first one to think about integrity in the private information retrieval setting, but related words have different uh, goals or different assumptions, or they don't target the attacks we'd like to target. So let's see which kind of properties we'd like our new primitive to ensure. So the first one is correctness, right? So if everyone behaves honestly, then Alice recovers the correct key for Bob. The second one is privacy. So we don't want to disclose the information to the server about Alice's query, even if the server learns whether the client aborted during reconstruction. So this is exactly to defend against selective failure attacks. And the third property we'd like to ensure is that either Alice outputs the authentic a public key for Bob, or she aborts, except with an negligible probability. The question now is, how do we define authentic data? What's an authentic record? So in the multi-server scheme, so uh, by the way, I think you are familiar with the two settings of PIR. One is in the multi-server setting, where we have multiple servers. They each hold a replica of the database, and they are all but one are malicious, and the honest one doesn't collude with the uh, malicious servers. So in this case, we can define authenticity as being the view on the database of the honest server. Uh, in the single server setting, we don't have this. We have a single malicious server. So we define uh, authenticity as being, uh, so we say that a record is authentic if we can compare this record against a digest of the true database. So we define this additional information to check the authenticity of the records. So our results in the multi-server schemes are as follows. We have a multi-server scheme that enables a client to issue a query for a single record, to retrieve a single record. And this, given a Merkle tree, achieves the same uh, complexity as an authenticated PIR and as an integrity error that is negligible. 
We also have a two servers scheme that enables the client to issue a single record query, but also to compute private statistics over the database. And it builds on a PRG and a field F. So given that, it achieves the same complexity as classic unauthenticated PIR, and thus an integrity error that is one over the field size. We also propose single server schemes. I will not go over the details. So the first one is based on the LW assumption and is basically a, an authenticated version of simple peer, the scheme Alexander will present later in this session. And we also have a scheme based on the decisional Diffie-Hellman assumption. So let's move to uh, the multi-server setting. I will focus on this setting. And I will use two servers just for simplicity, but we could in theory have more in this scheme. So for classic PIR, we assume that Alice knows where the public key of Bob is located. So in this case, it's in the second column of the database. So with this information, Alice prepares a vector that contains a one on the position of the column of interest and zeros everywhere else. And then she uses an additive secret sharing scheme to create two shares of this vector. And she sends these shares as queries to the servers. Upon receiving these queries, the servers perform the matrix vector multiplication and they send back the result. So as you can see by the linearity of the additive secret sharing scheme, these uh, two answers are basically secret shares of the column Alice wants to retrieve. So she can simply sum these two columns and uh, recover, so recover the column of interest and from that recover the record she wanted. So this protocol has correctness. By inspection, we can see privacy because of the additive secret sharing scheme and as a communication, the square root in the database size. The problem is that we don't have integrity, authenticity yet. Because if the server tampers with the database, so for example, uh, modify this record, then this modification propagates through the answer down to the reconstruction phase. So the malicious server can force Alice to recover whatever the malicious server wants. And the key idea to defend against this is to use two correlated queries. So we'll use one for, to get the data, to fetch the record from the database, and one to authenticate that record. Let's see how this works. So Alice samples a random alpha from a field, and she builds two vectors. One as before, with a one in the position of the column of interest, and an alpha, and the second one with an alpha in that position. And then again, she used the additive secret sharing scheme to create shares of this vector, and she sends both shares to the servers. Again, the servers multiply this vector, or both vectors, with the database. So first, the first vector, and then the second vector, and they send back the result to Alice. So uh, as before, Alice can use this to recover the record she wanted, but she has also some additional information. And we'll see in a moment how she can use this additional information to authenticate the record she just retrieved. So the check Alice performs is as follows. She checks that alpha times the sum of the first answers is equal to the sum of the second answers. If that's the case, she returns the record she's interested in. Otherwise, she aborts. And with this check, Alice can authenticate the record D22 she's interested in. So just to be clear, so this uh, protocol has uh, communication complexity, the square root in the database size. In the paper, we propose a, a more efficient protocol that has log n com communication complexity in the database size and is based on function secret sharing. So this is nice in theory, but the question is, does it work? So we implemented these schemes. And this actually is uh, the scheme for, uh, to get records, to fetch a record that I didn't introduce, but I wanted to show you the impact of this Merkle tree construction that we use in this first multi-server scheme. So here the overhead on user time and bandwidth is due to the Merkle tree proof verification and the uh, Merkle tree proof that is attached to each record. We also, as I said, have these uh, schemes for aggregate queries. So in these uh, graphs, we have the ratio between authenticated 
and classic unauthenticated PIR. And we'd like to evaluate this uh, function. So we want to count in a database that has PGP keys, we want to count how many emails that end with uh, the string S are there in this database. Uh, so as you can see, the ratio is very, very close to one, which means that for both for user time and bandwidth, adding authentication to this scheme comes almost for free. And uh, so given that, we also implemented a real uh, PGP key directory servers using our multi-server schemes. And now I'd like to go and show you a demo of this, hoping that, hoping that this uh, works. So please don't issue a query because I, want, I need all the computing power for me. Uh, So here I have our, our system, so it's a website. So here it's not secure because a server is acting as a client, but we also have a good client if you want to try this out. And here I'd like to uh, retrieve the PGP public key for uh, a colleague of mine at TPFL. So I can use this, wait for some moment, and I will get, I hope, I will get the uh, PGP public key of my colleague at TPFL, and this is using the scheme I just introduced. So let's go back to uh, here. Okay, with the demo, it worked. So let me uh, conclude. So we, uh, we introduced in this work an integrity definition, authenticity definition for PIR schemes, both in the single and multi-server setting. So either the client gets the authentic record, as we defined before, or the client aborts. In the multi-server setting, this comes almost for free, as we saw. In the single server setting, the situation is not that good. We have a 30 to 100 X overhead. So one open question is, can we do better in the single server setting? Uh, the key directory service uh, I showed you uh, works. We have a proof of concept, but it's not deployed yet. So you can read the full paper at the link there. The code is open source. And if you want to play with the KIDI, which is the key directory service, the link is there. And with that, I'm happy to take any question you might have.